So get ready for the uh, second debate uh, about use of radial or femoral PCI. So I'm speaking for radial for all, and my uh, partner will, will present uh, the no answer to it, which of course cannot be right. So, uh, so let's kick off my slides, please, and uh, let's get started. I'll try to finish this in exactly five minutes. Radio for all, let's move on to the next slide. My disclosures. And the next. So what are we really debating? Using the radial artery is the artery in the wrist versus the femoral artery, which is in the groin, as indicated on this cartoon. The radial artery in your wrist is very superficial, is right under the skin. It is easily compressible. However, it can easily spasm and also is very small. So there is a learning curve to the use of radial artery catheterization. Next slide, please. So my objective of my talk this morning is outlined in this phrase and quote from Mark Twain. Get your facts first, and you may distort them as you please. So if you have the facts right, you just need a few minutes, because that will convince you. So here are the facts, and please follow them along. Bleeding following percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, happens in about 3% of patients. One of the largest analysis in this field has been done by Sunil, and he stated that post-PCI bleeding is associated with not only the increased risk of future bleeding complication, but also increased ischemic complications like major adverse cardiovascular events and all-cause mortality. This, of course, has a price to be paid from the patient's loss of productivity and quality of life and associated healthcare costs. And this, was, this analysis was done in 460,000 patients. So please follow the numbers. I've highlighted them for you. The use of radial should be looked at as a collection of things we do as practitioners, whether we are physicians, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, nurses, however, medical students, that we have tried historically to curtail the risk of bleeding. We have adopted radial PCI because the artery is easily compressible. We have changed the dose of antiplatelet therapy. We have come up with newer agents and newer cocktails. And of course, we have launched a massive public awareness campaigns, all of which have resulted in decrease in overall risk of bleeding for our patients. So here, is the, here are the facts in greater detail. I can't show you all the studies, but RIVAL is a study, 7,000 patients, combined endpoint, the overall study was negative. However, there was a significant benefit for radial in the STEMI population, and overall vascular complication rates were small. Another study, rifle STAS, 1,000 patients, significantly lower risk of bleeding and lower risk of major adverse cardiovascular events in this study for radial. The matrix, 2014, 7,000 patients, of course, testing a combination of uh, blood, different kinds of blood thinners versus radial and radial and femoral PCI, again, uh, showed similar trends. A large meta-analysis of 761,000 patients showed a significant, as you can see the numbers, reduction in mortality with radial PCI, a significant reduction in site complications and major bleeding, and 80% reduction in the risk of need for uh, transfusions, and a similar uh, published meta-analysis in a uh, much more, uh, not very common journal that we read, but very recently published in 2015. So get your facts first, and you may distort them as you please, the facts. Bleeding is really bad for our patients. Radial cath consistently lowers bleeding. I've showed you all the numbers that, of the studies that I can cite. It reduces cost and improves patients' satisfactions. For the distortions, It'll come from my speaker and colleague, Dr. Emmanuel Brilakis. And before I finish, I want to show you this. Parts are known about Dr. Brilakis. This is him trying. We have a special delicacy. Yep, you guessed it. It's a scorpion. Let's see how it is. No, no, no. Thank you. Okay, well, you have to, you know, go to movies to make your point, then there's a problem there. <laughs> now, let me start by saying there is no such thing as free lunch. 
And you're going to see what I mean in a very few seconds, if we can put my slides on. But what I want to make to every single one of you is a plea. It's a plea to save Dr. Banerjee from the radial tsunami. You know, radial is an approach that's been expanding rapidly. There's some reasons behind it. But doing radial for everything, have we lost the wisdom in just too much data that you just saw? I'll give you eight reasons why there's no freelance and radial has problems. First one, this is not an uncommon event. Now, is it the fellow's fault that you cannot engage the coronary? I don't think so. <laughs> Number two, what is the support with this? Do any complex stuff? Well, you see the support on red, that's the radial, that's the femoral, and this is with radial. So do you want support or not? I'll leave it up to you. Number three, if it's you doing this case, left main, single last remaining vessel, do you want to do this with a six friends or seven friends radial, or have an eight friends femoral and an impeller? Can leave it up to you, it's your life. How about radiation? <laughs> This is a radiation uh, meta-analysis. Actually, Dr. Rao was part of this, showing that consistently there is increasing radiation for the patient, both for diagnostic and for PCI. What is on the small print is that the operator got 50% more radiation if he didn't use uh, extra protection. So do you want to get cancer? And now I must admit, he has the advantage, which is gold. So he can protect himself with more amount of gold than any one of us can afford. But <laughs> is that still enough? There are still uncovered parts. <laughs> Number five. How much time does it take? You know, I know it's, we have time in the world, but there's time to be said. And this is the only randomized trial of radial versus femoral in bypass patients, 17% crossover. But look at how much contrast it takes, much more, how much more fluoroscopy time, and look at the operator dose. It's actually double in radiation. So you get double radiation with radial. Now again, cost effectiveness is a different story, but that's what happens sometimes with radial cases. And do you want to spend the public dollars? Then, don't forget, we do CATH for a reason. The reason is to get an answer. If you don't get the answer to the question you asked, how is the coronary, did you achieve much? And you'll know which technique was going to give you this result. And last but not least, if it's you having a, a CATH, would you like your operator to be comfortable? Would you like your physician doing your intervention with your arteries to feel good, or to be stretched out and in pain and having back pain? Again, this is, again, up to you. So based on all this data, we had a consensus meeting a few days ago in the cath lab, and we decided to make a new classification of CHIP. CHIP, as you heard last night, is complex, high-risk indicated procedures. And this new classification just came out. You are the first ones to witness it. Congratulations. And this is the CHIP R, which is the procedure made much more painful than it should be by use of the radial approach. <laughs> and this is not enough. There is more. The CHIP R square. <laughs> when you insist on using radial, even when it's not clearly not working. <laughs> so do you want to be an R squared, C R square operator? It's up to you. <laughs> now, radial does have a role. I'll give you that ACS, TEMI does have a role. But for previous bypass patients, complex PCI, ephemeral is clearly the way to go. And also, the data is important, but I took the data. So arrival was negative, of course, but that's, you didn't hear that very well. But anyway, it was radial, but STEMI was better, right? So radial works for STEMI. Then you go to matrix, and guess what? It doesn't work for STEMI, but it works for non-STEMI, where it didn't work for rival. Hmm. Well, maybe it's just me, but consistency is an important thing. And also, don't forget that the comparisons made is between femoral done with high dose to B3A, without use of micropuncture, um, closure devices, which also can reduce um, uh, complication. So radial for, for all, the answer is very simple. You can see it on the screen. And it's not just me. This is from the cath lab spontaneous response <laughs> When we're doing the study, patients randomized to radial. This is what people were doing. And let's remind you, about being absolute is, can lead to greatness. So Louis Cartoz, uh, Peter the Great, the Fredericks, now have a new greatest <laughs> in the world, the Barnes of Dallas. <laughs> but this is what happens. You know, these big leaders had bad outcomes. They, had, they died in a very painful death. And I do not want <laughs> my colleague to get in trouble with being here, but at least he have kids, so we don't have to worry about that. But everything else, we really have to worry about it. So radial for all, the answer is I would much rather prefer hold a tarantula in my f fingers or a python uh, from the Florida or an alligator than do all my cases radial. Thank you very much. <laughs>